Welcome back everyone. A major shift in how Americans ultimately buy homes could be coming this summer after a powerful real estate group has now settled an antitrust lawsuit and they have agreed to change a rule that dictates how real estate agents are compensated. What does this mean for you as a buyer, as a seller, a homeowner, someone looking to get their first property as an agent? We're going to be talking about it and going into the nitty gritty. So without further ado, folks, let's get started and dive right in. And we'll address the burning question on everyone's mind. Will this affect home prices? Will this ultimately make it cheaper to buy a home and put a dent in the market? If the settlement is approved by a judge, the rule change will start in mid-July, leaving the real estate industry scrambling over what the future of buying or selling a home will look like. Now here's what we know so far about this settlement and what it could mean for the housing market in the United States and for the American people. What exactly is changing? Well, home sellers and buyers get their own agents, as you know, and they're supposed to help them navigate the market if your realtor is doing a good job. And most agents are members of the NAR, not to be confused with the NRA, the National Association of Realtors. They pay dues to be a part of the organization of one and a half million agents. And being part of the NAR gives agents access to the organization's listings known as the MLS or the Multiple Listing Service. For example, you go on Zillow right now, you're looking at properties on the market or the MLS. And this is where seller agents can post properties up for sale and where buying agents can see what homes are on the market. Currently, the NAR has a rule that requires seller as agents to include the commission that is being paid to sell the house. You might even see it on a listing description if you look at some properties right now. Now, you might already know that the standard rate currently ranges from about 5% to 6%, meaning commission on the U.S. average home at the end of 2023, $391,700, could reach up to $23,502 if you're just looking at, on average, a single family house. Now, though sellers are the ones that pay the commission, the compensation is usually split between the seller's agent and the buyer's agent. NAR has emphasized that the organization does not establish commission rates at five to 6% as a rule, and that commissions are technically negotiable, but they're usually standard, and you're not gonna see much flexibility when it comes to your agent. Rather, the organization requires seller's agents to list a commission which is usually the standard rate. As part of the settlement, NAR said it will no longer allow commission rates to be posted on its listings. And the organization is also requiring buyer's agents to have written agreements with buyers that they work with. Now, why this change is a big deal for home buyers, the fact is, is that consumer advocates are praising the settlement as a step toward transparency in the home buying marketplace. So experts are saying that from a consumer standpoint, this is a complicated, opaque marketplace. And so after the settlement, the marketplace will become a little less opaque and the settlement could ultimately change what is baked into the sale of a home and making it clear to buyers exactly what they are paying for. Now, because seller agents and buyer agents usually split commission, which is paid for by a home seller, many home buyers do not pay their agents directly, but rather sellers increase the price of their homes to compensate for the commission that they pay their real estate agents. Right, So when you sell a house, as you know, let's say, keep it easy, you're selling it for 200, let's say you owe 100 on it, you're not gonna walk away with 100,000 by any means. In fact, you're gonna have to give a lot towards closing costs, which includes those commissions, perhaps an inspection fee, maybe even transfer taxes, depending on what the rules and laws are in your local state, and other closing costs that could, could come along with selling a home. Now, in other countries, commissions on real estate transactions tend to be lower. If you look at the UK, for example, the average commission is just 1.3%. That is insane compared to the United States. In Australia, it's 2.5%. Can't believe these numbers. The decoupling of seller agent and buyer agent fees allows for a lot more flexibility and novelty in how agents are going to get paid. The possibilities are more open now than ever before, and we're really gonna see generally a lot more transparency across the board. And since buyer agents will be required to write up agreements with their clients, buyers will have more room to negotiate commissions with their agents depending on what services they need them from. And since buyer agents will be required to write up agreements with their clients, buyers will have more room to negotiate the commissions with their agents depending on what services they need from them. Some may opt for a flat rate fee or pay their agent by the hour. Now with the settlement upending the default relationship, many buying agents have with their clients, home buyers are going to be a lot more savvy about what they can get from their agent and what services they're willing to pay for. 
So people are saying it's going to take a lot more consumer infra information and education to know that there are alternatives and other kinds of fee structures. Some buyer agents may still try to split that commission with seller agents who advertise that commission on other platforms besides the MLS, but maintaining the practice will be harder for agents with the new rule. Now, the question is that everyone is waiting for the burning question, will this bring home prices down? Is it going to make a dent in the housing market? Well, unfortunately, it's unclear whether this change will have an impact on home prices, at least in the short term. Experts agree that home prices won't be impacted anytime soon. So while it is unclear what changes the settlement will be bringing to home prices, experts do agree that it will likely change who gets to continue working in the real estate industry. The settlement will probably encourage buyers to become more invested in who they choose as their agent, and they'll be paying them more directly, making it more competitive for buying agents to find clients. Consumer advocates have argued that there is a glut of real estate agents working in the field. Given the licensing process to become an agent, it's fairly simple. And while there is demand for real estate agents with experience, some working in the field don't always work in good faith. It's very difficult to police this marketplace because the regulators have limited resources and are not fully committed to this. It's very difficult to see ethical and even legal violations. A lot of this is just oral agreements between listing brokers, listing agents, and buyer agents. And the settlement could mean a more experienced pool of real estate agents and ultimately better service for more competitive prices for buyers, according to some experts. And the high fixed fees that don't depend on experience is what kept a lot of people in the market. Even working with just one deal makes it worthwhile for people to stay. Now, what ultimately prompted this? Well, the settlement comes out of a serious class action lawsuit from home sellers who argued it was unfair that they had to uncover the commissions of buyer brokers. The NAR agreed to pay $418 million in damages and to change its commission rules to settle the suits. In October, a federal jury had found the NAR guilty in on one of the suits, finding the organization and other residential brokerages liable for $1.78 billion in damages for conspiring to artificially inflate commissions. Now, the NAR has denied the price fix fixing allegations, and in a statement, NAR's interim CEO, Nikki Wright, said that the organization's goal is to preserve consumer choice and protect our members to the greatest extent possible. The settlement achieves both of those goals, Wright said. Now, while there could be no perfect outcome, this agreement is the best outcome we could achieve in the circumstances and provides a path forward for our industry, which makes up nearly one-fifth of the American economy and NAR, right, went on to say. Now, some feel that the settlement is expected to have such a widespread impact on real estate transactions, and it just shows how much power the NAR has over the industry. A lot of the experts are pointing this out. It's a very big deal to see them take a loss, and they haven't really had to in the entirety of their existence, maybe since the New Deal. Now, the group, which was founded in 1908, has $1 billion in assets and has been a powerful lobbying arm for the real estate industry. But the industry has been going through intense changes over the last decade. Record high home prices have left many home buyers disgruntled by the market, and a majority of renters in a recent poll indicated that the American dream of buying a home is dead, and that new technology has empowered buyers with more information about the market. Instead of relying solely on a broker, home buyers can also turn to websites like Zillow or Redfin, both alternatives to the NAR's MLS, to try to find their home. And the NAR settlement shows how the organization, while still powerful in the real estate industry, is starting to wobble under those pressures. For so many decades, the NAR was essentially the central organization in determining the shape of housing policy, and to see them on the back foot is a big shift in how much power they have. So folks, what do you think about all of this? Do you think it is going to make a difference? Do you think it's going to affect your average home buyer or home seller? Are you a real estate agent yourself? What are you doing in preparation for this? What changes are you going to be making? Let us know down below in the comment section. I'm curious to hear. We'll be keeping a close eye on this and updating you as this goes on. This is a developing story and an ongoing saga. So all updates and developments can be found right here on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, folks. Hope you got some information out of it. Share it with a friend. Get the word out. Spread it on social media. Give it a big thumbs up. Smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. And if you want to get some free stocks, all on me, all free, use the link down below in the description. Sign up with Robinhood and you'll get some free stocks, some valued up to thousands of dollars in some cases. If you also want to stay safe and protected online today, sign up with Aura, start your free trial, and you'll be safe and secure online. Check it out, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Take care for now.